Hey everyone, my name is Amal and you're watching Newsbreak. Let's see what's coming up on today's show. New South Wales new roadmap. This year's Fat Bear winner. And a very cute canine commuter. But before we do anything, YouTube's filled with content. We've got a lot of great content. Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss it. The content, very cute. First up to some good news. The World Health Organization has given the green light to a new malaria vaccine. Here's Liv. When you think of the most dangerous animals in the world, you might think of sharks or crocs, but think smaller. Nope, it's not snakes or spiders either. The deadliest creatures on the planet are actually mosquitoes. You see, mozzies can carry a whole heap of horrible diseases, like dengue fever, Ross River virus and malaria. That last one, malaria, is a parasitic disease that's spread by mosquitoes' saliva when they bite. Luckily, we don't have malaria here in Australia, but around the world, more than 200 million people get the disease each year, and hundreds of thousands of people die from it, mostly in Africa. For a long time, scientists have been trying to find a vaccine, and now one has finally been approved. The RTSS malaria vaccine has to be taken in four doses, and trials have shown it could prevent four in 10 cases of malaria. This vaccine is a gift to the world, but its value will be felt most in Africa. The New South Wales Premier has announced some changes to the state's exit from lockdown. From next Monday, people who are fully vaccinated will be allowed to have 10 adults gather in a home. Up to 30 adults will be allowed to gather in public outdoor spaces and indoor pools will be reopened. As for you guys, kindy, year one and year 12 students in lockdown areas will return to face-to-face -face learning from October 18th, with all students returning from October 25th. Two scientists have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for finding new ways to build molecules. One of them is Germany's Benjamin List. He was super excited to be greeted by this when he arrived at work. The other is Scottish-born chemist David McMillan. I would say um, it's dazed and confused. I would say it's, it's just incredibly excited. They shared the prize for developing new tools for building molecules that have helped make new drugs and are more environmentally friendly. It's that time of year in the US state of Alaska where bears pack on the kilos as they prepare to hibernate for winter. It's also when Katmi National Park holds Fat Bear Week, where people get to vote for their favourite fat bears. And the results are in. Here's Leela. Every year as the Northern Hemisphere heads into winter, these bears have to eat as much salmon as they can in order to build up their fat reserves for hibernation. And it's kind of unbelievable the amount of weight these bears gain. Before, after. It's critical to their survival. Um, once they enter their winter dens here in about a month, um, they will not eat or drink anything until they emerge in the spring. And for thousands of people, watching them fatten up has become a lot of fun. So Fat Bear Week is a annual competition that the park hosts. It's a bracket style contest where we have matchups between different bears um, and folks get to decide um, which bear they think has gained the most weight and gotten fattest over the course of the summer. So who took out the top spot? It was between these two. 15 year old bear 151 called Walker or his nickname, The Walk and 25-year-old bear 480 Otis, one of the oldest and most beloved bears. And the winner is winning by more than 6,000 votes. It is, I know you can't bear it any longer, it's Otis. This is the fourth time he's won the competition in its seven-year history. Aw, don't worry, Walker, there's always next year. Now, before we go, I think we have some time to meet a very cute canine commuter. This is Boji, a stray dog from Istanbul, who has taught himself to take public transport across the city. Uh, two months ago, we have noticed a dog trying to use our trams, our metro, and he knows where to go, he knows where to get out. As you can imagine, Boji has become a favorite with his fellow commuters and has a reputation for being oh, a very good boy. When the door is open, you have to let the people out first and uh, after everyone gets out, he gets in the train and he has a special place. 
Now officials track him with a microchip and say he drops by at least 29 stations a day for a fun doggy day out. Now that's all from me, but before you go you should hit that subscribe button, it's what Boji would want, and I'll catch you tomorrow.